Hello and welcome to the first video of my channel. My name is Brent Goodman, if you don't know me already. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about the top 10 films of 2019. This was a really great year for movies, and sadly there were a few movies that didn't make the list, which I'll be talking about soon. But first, I want to thank you for joining me on my channel. I hope you like and subscribe below. In the description, you'll find links to my work if you're unfamiliar with it. This is more of a personal channel for me, so I'll be doing more vlog-type videos and uh, more personal videos kind of talking about filmmaking and my experience with filmmaking. I plan on making more videos like this. I've never made a video like this before, kind of talking in front of the camera. So I hope you'll uh, continue to stay with me as I learn this process. It's 2020, so I want to do things that kind of break me out of my comfort zone. And um, this is something I've always wanted to do. So I think uh, this is the year to do it. Last night was the Oscars, so I thought it was a good time to talk about my top 10 films of the year. A lot of the films on my list were nominated for different categories, some being Best Picture, others being Best uh, Screenwriting, and I'm really happy that a lot of them got recognized. So without further ado, I'll go into my honorable mentions. My first honorable mention is The Lighthouse. The Lighthouse was directed by Robert Eggers, who directed The Witch from 2017, stars Robert Pattinson and Willem Dafoe, who had really great performances in, in both their roles. The cinematography is fantastic, and I'm really glad that it was nominated for Best Cinematography. The production design was amazing, and I'm really glad that a lot of people got to see this movie. Although I do think The Witch is a better film, um, Robert Eggers still is a fantastic director, and I look forward to seeing what he does next. My final honorable mention is Dolomite Is My Name which stars Eddie Murphy in the, t in the title role. Eddie Murphy really surprised me in this movie. This movie was a big surprise for me. It's on Netflix right now, and that's how I watched it. It's a movie about filmmaking. It's a movie about music. It's a movie about comedy, um, and it really blends well, and it, the whole movie just flows and has really great pacing. I really enjoyed the movie, and uh, like I said, it was a really big surprise. Eddie Murphy did a fantastic job, and I can't wait to see him in more movies. I'm really glad he's back to doing uh, more... Uh, more movies like this so um, really look forward to seeing it highly recommend it check it on check it out on Netflix if you can now on to my actual list at number 10 I have Knives Out directed by Ryan Johnson this was a movie that I was really looking forward to Ryan Johnson has been a director that I've been looking out for for a while I've loved his work going back to Looper and even to Brick he's probably one of the best writer directors working right now and this film has been um, really recognized for having an original story and having an original script. And I think it really uh, deserves that recognition. I think all the performances were amazing in this movie. Um, it really felt like, it really felt true to Ryan Johnson's vision. Um, he most recently did The Last Jedi, which uh, got a lot of backlash and controversy and it really divided the fan base. Uh, but I actually really love the film, and I think it's probably one of the best Star Wars movies. It's probably sitting at number two on my list right now, and I'm sure I'll get some comments below about that. Yeah, that's number 10 on my list. Moving on to number nine, I have Uncut Gems. This was directed by the Safdie brothers, who did Good Time from 2017, uh, one of my favorite movies of that year. I do think that Good Time was a little bit better. However, I do think that Adam Sandler's performance was incredible, and I'm very shocked and surprised that he wasn't nominated for Best Actor. I think Joaquin Phoenix definitely deserved his um, Best Actor role as the Joker, but I do think that Adam Sandler should have gotten some recognition for the way he transformed himself into this role, and just what a fantastic job he did. The Safdie brothers made a really great film. Um, it's got great, great pacing. I do think Good Time does have a little bit better pacing and is feels more like an adrenaline rush. This film does take its time to establish its characters. I do think it takes a little too much time um, in some scenes, but overall, I think the film is fantastic. I would definitely recommend watching it. There's a lot of A24 movies um, this year, and I think this is probably one of the, the best of the bunch. Moving on to number eight, I have Honey Boy, which features Shia LaBeouf and Noah Jupe. This film really uh, moved me. I think it's probably... One of the most emotional films of the year. For those who don't know what the movie's about, it's about Shia LaBeouf. It's kind of an autobiographical film. Shia LaBeouf wrote it, and he also stars in it. Um, he plays his father. And he has probably one of the most heartbreaking performances. And it actually is one of the best screenplays of the year, and I'm really surprised that 
Shia wasn't nominated for acting or screenwriting or both because I really think he would have deserved it. It's incredibly personal. No dupe, Shia LaBeouf um, did a really great job. They had really great chemistry on set. And the director, um, Alma, I had never heard of her before, but I look forward to seeing more of her work. Um, I was actually at a screening for this film, and Shia LaBeouf and Alma did a, a Q&A afterwards, and I was really happy to be in the room with Shia after watching um, just such a great performance and really personal journey for him with this. So that's number eight on my list. Moving on to number seven, I have Booksmart. Booksmart really surprised me. Um, it's directed by Olivia Wilde. It stars Beanie Feltz. Feldstein and Caitlin Denver and I think uh, Olivia Wilde probably has the best directorial debut of the year with this film it was incredibly funny memorable it's really rewatchable it's on Hulu right now if you'd like to check it out but I really enjoyed every single moment of this movie and I can't wait to see what else Olivia Wilde does it was probably one of the best comedies of the year for me I was really sad that it didn't get quite the box office success it could have been a lot of people compare it to Superbad, kind of a female version of Superbad, um, which I can see that in terms of like the kind of adult humor in it and feeling more of like a, a teenage film at the, at the same time. But honestly, I think this film is a little bit better um, than Superbad. One of my favorites, definitely. Number six on my list is Marriage Story. Marriage Story is probably one of the best shot films of the year. I think the cinematography really evokes a lot of emotion into the film. It was shot on 35 millimeter um, and kind of looks a little overexposed. Um, so you get a lot of good contrast. Um, but the performances were amazing. Adam Driver um, proves to be one of the best um, working actors right now. Scarlett Johansson is no surprise being fantastic in this role. I'm really glad she got recognized for not only this film, but for Jojo Rabbit for her performance because I think it was really well-deserved. Noah Baumbach um, has a really great script with this film. I was expecting him to walk away with Best Original Screenplay. However, I'm really happy that Parasite did end up getting that as well. I do think this is Noah Baumbach's best film to this day, although he does have some very good films like Francis Ha, um, The Mer Merowit Stories, but I do think this probably takes the cake for his best film yet. Moving on to number five, I have Jojo Rabbit. Jojo Rabbit was directed by Taika Waititi, better known for Thor Ragnarok and What We Do in the Shadows. He also directed the last episode of The Mandalorian on Disney+. Plus. This film was amazing, and it really moved me with the story. Um, it's incredibly funny at times, um, really emotional, and it was just such a good blend of, of having a rich story, being comedic, being satire being a drama, all the performers in this film. Roman, um, the young child actor, he did a fantastic job, and I really hope to see more of him in the future. Like I said, with Scarlett Johansson um, in, the last, in the last movie, uh, she did a fantastic job. I'm really happy that this got nominated. It was kind of surprising that I got nominated for Best Picture to me. Pretty mixed reviews um, with the critic scores, but um, I'm really happy that it did get end up getting the Best Picture nomination. Moving on to number four, I have The Farewell. Uh, which was directed by Lulu Wang. It's a very personal story. And for those who don't know what the story is about, I really ch recommend checking it out. It was a This American Life segment on the radio show. And at its basic core, it's about a family who um, has a grandmother who is dying, but they choose not to tell her. Um, it stars Aquafina, which I was very surprised that she has um, such a good dramatic performance in the movie. I wasn't quite expecting that. But she did a really fantastic job. The story really moved me. It almost brought me to tears in some moments. And I was really sad to not see it get recognized for anything for anything this year, not directing or uh, best picture. But nonetheless, I do think it uh, deserves it. And it's a great film on its own. Moving on to number three, I have Us. Us was directed by Jordan Peele, who also directed Get Out. Uh, get Out was my number one film of 2017. And I'll have the list below of my top 100 films of the decade, so you'll see that um, on my list. I do think it's probably the best directed film of the year, with Lupita having such a unique and powerful performance, especially with her having two characters in this film. She really um, brought a really good contrast, and Jordan Peele did an amazing job directing everyone in the film and making such a, such a great film. I do think it's really rewatchable, and the music of the movie is, is really memorable and it makes it good for repeat viewings. I do think the message of the film is really strong, 
and uh, we'll probably keep looking back at it for a long time. I'm really happy that a lot of people went out and saw this movie in theaters. It got a really good box office reception uh, for it being an original film. And uh, I'm really happy that Jordan, Jordan Peele is bringing a uh, really tasteful horror film and making it um, popular again. Moving on to number two with the best picture of 2019 is Parasite. Uh, this is probably one of the most unique films of the year and uh, really surprised me. I didn't know anything about it going into it in the theaters, but it was really amazing. And I'm really happy that a foreign film um, is being talked about this much and a lot of people are, are watching it. Um, with it coming off of its best picture uh, win last night, um, I'm really happy that, that the tides are kind of changing in film and we're allowed to have these films in the mainstream and, and talk about them just as much as, you know, Joker or um, a big film like that. Yeah, I'm really happy for Bong. I think the um, script is really powerful and the directing was amazing. Really glad he won Best Director as well and Screenplay. All four wins that he received last night were really well-deserved. Despite it being number two on my list, I do think it is probably one of the most unique films um, and probably the best picture of the year. For my personal favorite at number one is Little Women. Little Women was directed by Greta Gerwig, uh, who directed Lady Bird from 2017, which was one of my favorite movies of 2017 as well. Greta is probably my favorite director right now. She's very inspiring to me um, because she tells very personal stories. And although this is an adapted screenplay, it does feel like she brings a lot of, her, of herself to the, to the source material. I was really hoping it would walk away with best adapted screenplay, but, um, but, I, am hap but I am happy that Taika Waititi did um, receive that award for Jojo Rabbit. This, this was shot on 35 millimeter, and I was lucky enough to get to see it in 35 millimeter at Tarantino's Theater at the New Beverly. And it really brought a lot of life to the film and a lot of, a really nice glow. I had actually never read the book, so a lot of a lot of the story um, I didn't know about. And I think the ensemble performances are amazing. Greta did a really really great job directing every single person in this movie, and there are a lot of actors. Not only are there the, the four sisters, but there's Laura Dern, Timothy Chalamet, who's also amazing in this film, and Gary Cooper, who really surprised me. He had a really um, powerful and emotional performance that I wasn't expecting. All around, this film is really great, and I recommend seeing it. I don't think it's getting as much attention as I think it should, and I think that also happened with Lady Bird. I think Lady Bird really should have walked away with Best Picture, or Get Out should have walked away with Best Picture. Um, but for both films to walk away with nothing um, is kind of a disappointment, especially with the music. I do think the music in Joker was really great, but I do think Alexander Desplat's uh, soundtrack uh, or score was was really well deserving of this award. But with that, I'm really happy um, with all of these films on my list, and I'm happy that it wasn't a very hard list to make, um, as some other years have been. If you like uh, this list or you want to check out my uh, top 100 films of the decade, I'll, I'll put that below. And yeah, if you'd like to see more videos like this, uh, obviously this is my first video, so um, I hope you liked it and you'll subscribe below. Um, stay tuned for more. I'll be doing a lot more vlogs. Um, and some more videos about filmmaking in general. Um, thanks for checking out my channel, and I hope to see you guys soon. Thanks.